In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can stay, say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Amen. Amen. All right. Happy New Year. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Oh, good, good. Good to hear. Yeah, I guess many of you had a great New Year's Eve celebration. You know, um, my family also had a great um, time too. We stayed at a local hotel and um, for the New New Year's Eve, and we went out to um, a theater and watched a movie called uh, Spies in Disguise. Um, this movie. Oh yeah. Hmm. So as the title says, it is a spy movie, and these are the two main characters. Um, now let me introduce the world's best spy, Lance Stalling. And this is, the, this is his nerdy tech uh, officer uh, who provides all the gadgets that he needs, um, named Walter Beckett. So the story begins 
um, with showing off how super awesome spy Lance is. Um, he is a truly one-man army with lots of gadgets. Uh, the next James Bond, and he got some style. Very debonair. You know. On the other hand, Walter, this guy, is just a nerd. Um, and he even got fired in later because of his not-so-tactical inventions. And it seemed Lance, the spy guy, was the main character of the movie because he was the one who does the job with action and style. But later on, as, as the story develops, you'll realize, actually, it was Walter who is the main character of the movie, and his message is the main message that this movie is trying to talk about. Today's passage is about John the Baptist. It seems he also was a weirdo, right? He was from wilderness of Judea, not Jerusalem or big city. It's wilderness. Nothing there. It's not even a, like the countryside. Um, and he wore clothes made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His main food was locust, metugi, and, and wild honey. But it seems his message was very clear and bold. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And many people went out to him and were baptized by him. It seems he was more authoritative than religious leaders in that time, like Pharisees and Sadducees, because he scolded them and even called them a bad name. Well, in the end, even Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, right? So here's the question. Is John the Baptist is the main character? Yes? No? I mean, why? He looks like the main character here. Yeah. Many, many people went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan not only just went out to him, but they confessed their sins. They were baptized by him. I'm telling you, even Jesus was baptized by him. And I'm pretty sure if you lived in, in 2,000 years ago, if you lived there, you thought John the Baptist is the hero, the main character. And yet, he is not. It seems John is the one who gets all the spotlight. But the truth is, he puts the spotlight to Jesus and proves that Jesus is not only the Messiah, the anointed one, but also the Son of God. John is the perfect example who did everything that he could do to prepare the way for the Lord. If we have the Oscar or Emmy Award for the best supporting role for the Book of Gospels, I guess it should be given to John the Baptist. But how? How he put the spotlight to Jesus and prepared the way for the Lord? Let's find out together, shall we? So John the Baptist was the one who prepared the way for the Lord. As we journey through the Gospel of Matthew, we have read and heard everything about Jesus, his genealogy and how his mother found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit and how the Magi from the East came and worshipped him and how they had to flee to Egypt, escaping the killing order and how they settled in Nazareth after coming back to Israel. And all of a sudden, boom, 
John the Baptist. I mean, John who? I know Jesus, but who is this guy? Why is this guy in the middle of Jesus' story? Is he the one who wrote the Gospel of John? Right? Well, there are two Johns in the Bible. Um, the other one who was disciple of Jesus and wrote the Gospel of John, and this one, John the Baptist, who prepared the way for the Lord. John was a prophet who was born in a priest family. And his birth wasn't an ordinary one. It was a very special one. In the Gospel of Luke, the angel Gabriel, who announced Jesus' birth, also announced John's birth to his father, Zechariah. But he couldn't believe it because him and his wife, Elizabeth, were very old. As a divine sign, Zechariah became silent, unable to speak, until John was born. In fact, Elizabeth, John's mother, and Maria, Jesus' mother, were cousins. When Maria heard the news that from the angel Gabriel about her own pregnancy, she even came over and stayed with Elizabeth for three months. That being said, John was a second cousin of Jesus. And when he grew and became strong in spirit, the Bible said he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance. So John was not an ordinary guy. Okay, okay. He was a very special man. But how he prepared the way for the Lord. People of Israel who lived in John's time were desperately waiting for the coming of Messiah. They were waiting because they knew the Old Testament was filled with prophecies of coming Messiah. Those prophecies foretold what kind of Messiah he will be, what kind of life he will live, and what kind of things he will do, and etc., etc. And few of them foretold that a messenger will appear before the Messiah. Let's look at Malachi 3. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. And let's read Isaiah 43 to 5 says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Let's go back to our passage today. In verse 3, it says, This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. This is John the Baptist. I told you the messianic prophecies foretold that there will be a messenger before the Messiah. And John was that messenger. He was the voice, one calling in the wilderness. And where was he? Where was John preaching? In the wilderness of Judea. And here, another prophecy from Malachi chapter 4. See, I will send the prophet Eliza to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes, 
He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents. This prophecy says the prophet Eliza will appear before the day of the Lord comes. And this is the prophecy the angel Gabriel gave to John's father, Zechariah, in Luke 1, that says, He will bring back many of people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Eliza to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The prophecy about the prophet Eliza coming before the Messiah was fulfilled because John the Baptist was the one in the spirit and power of Eliza. He even looked like the prophet Eliza. Here is the description of prophet Eliza when the king Ahaziah, the king of Israel, recognized him about 800 years before John the Baptist. In 2 Kings, it said, They replied, He had a garment of hair and had a leather belt around his waist. The king said, That was Eliza, the Tishbite. And what kind of clothes John wore? John wore the clothes of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. And who is Eliza, by the way? Eliza was the one of the most famous prophets in the Old Testament. You can compare him even to Moses. He alone dueled 450 Baal worshippers, the idol worshippers on Mount Carmel, and God responded him with fire from heaven and burnt everything. And everyone saw Yahweh is the real God. And he was ascended to heaven, not died. Only two people in the Bible didn't taste death. And one of them is Eliza. Well, we have read through many messianic prophecies, prophecies that was talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the voice which prepares the way of the Lord. John the Baptist was the Eliza, the prophet, who was promised to be sent before the Lord. John the Baptist was the messenger who was told that he will prepare the way before the Lord. All of his messages, all of his fulfillment of prophecies, all of his extraordinary birth stories, aiming only one person, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Every aspect of his life was there to spotlight Jesus and proves that Jesus is the promised Messiah and Son of God. That is why I told you John the Baptist was the one who prepared the way, of, way for the Lord. And that is why John appears in the middle of Jesus' story. Because all about him reveals more about Jesus. Do you love going to a concert? I do. Uh, I love going to a concert. Uh, especially uh, when my favorite band is in my town. And one of the most exciting things that I enjoy in a concert is actually an opening band. Because you never know who's going to open for this big band or somebody else. The band that performs for the main band and make people ready and more excited for the main band. Right? I, have to notice this, I have noticed this one tendency that when the main band is great, 
because of their namesake, they usually have a great opening band. And even though I never heard, them, heard of them before, their sounds are really incredible. I was like, how can I never heard of them before? So when I like the opening band, I kind of know that the day's concert will be pretty good. Like the last Bethel concert. Um, Phil Wickham was the opening band. And you know Phil Wickham who sang um, Living Hope, uh, you, are, you Are Beautiful, How Great Is Your Love, etc. Anyway, oh, how I love that concert. But sometimes, sometimes, the opening band was not that good. And it kind of tells me that what kind of concert going to be like. Yeah. Like this opening band and main band relationship. People see Jesus through us. We are the opening band for Jesus. Like John the Baptist prepared the way for the Lord through who he was and revealed the true identity of Jesus, we also need to prepare the way for Jesus so that we can reveal who Jesus is through our lives. And how can you prepare the way for the Lord? How can you reveal Jesus in our lives? What does it mean for us to prepare the way for the Lord? Today's passage, John's message of preparing the way for the Lord was very simple, actually. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent. Preparing the way for the Lord means preparing our heart. So Jesus could come to our heart. Make our hearts straight path for Jesus. You know, repentance is a very uncomfortable subject to talk about. Especially in the New Year's service. But I want to say this. Without the help of God, we can even genuinely repent because we are sinners. We don't even know the weight of what we have done wrong. There was one time I forgot to uh, take off my sunglasses and entered my apartment. Everything was so dark, of course. And I told my wife, honey, why is it so dark in here? I don't know why. It's, 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 it's in the afternoon. Let's turn on the light. Then I realized I was wearing sunglasses. I, how, how. When Holy Spirit gives us a new understanding of our behavior and reveals the true meaning of what we have done, then we are compelled change that behavior. In that sense, repentance is a blessing. There were only a handful of times in my life that God touched my heart and I couldn't stop confessing my sins. All of a sudden, I couldn't stand the weight of my sin and realized what kind of sinner I still remember those experiences. And it reminds me how great is God's mercy and love for me. Yes, it does sound strange, but the more you are forgiven, the more you are loved. That is the beauty of repentance. My brothers and sisters, the life of John the Baptist was only focused on preparing the way for the Lord and revealing Jesus' true identity of promised Messiah and Son of God. As he revealed Jesus 
through his life, we Christians also reveal who Jesus is through our lives. How can you do that? How can you prepare the way for the Lord? Through repentance. I sincerely hope this new year you experience, you experience the blessing of repentance and know how deep and how wide and how great God's love for you. Prepare the way for the Lord. Prepare your heart for Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we come to you with broken heart because that's the sacrifice that you are seeking in us, Father. Father, Father let us remind it that our humble repentance is a blessing for us. Help us realize who we, really, who we are really. And open our eyes so we can see who you are, Father. Father, let us live a life of a supporting role. Not the main character of our lives, but be the supporting one who only spotlight you. And so that many people who know us who see us, see you through us, Lord. Help us. In your name we pray. Amen.